guys? Good? It's late in the day. Make some noise. You guys doing good? I, this is my first time to uh, Greece, and I've had a wonderful time. Athens is an absolutely beautiful city, and um, I would just like to capture the, the, uh, the, the most beautiful part of the city, if I could, for a moment. The, the people of Athens. So, if you guys can just give me a, a quick thumbs up from the crowd, that would be awesome. I'm not kidding. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, improving the power of real-time communications. I have already tweeted that. So before we get started, a couple of notes for you guys. Uh, on the front here is my Twitter handle, at Dave Kirpin. If you have any questions now or for the rest of your lives, <laughs> you can tweet me. Uh, responsiveness is one of my personal core values. And we're going to talk a little bit about responsiveness in a little while. But I do respond to every single tweet I get, and I get sometimes uh, a thousand in a day. Um, if you want a faster response, you can tweet to my company, that's at Likeable Media. Uh, or you can tweet to my book team, that's at Likeable Book. And they will be able to respond just a little bit faster. But I will respond as well if you ever have any questions at all. Also, this deck is already posted on SlideShare. SlideShare.net slash Dave Kirpin. So don't worry about taking notes on the actual slides because they're online for you all to see already. Okay, so we're going to talk for about 45 minutes or so about uh, social media, uh, some of the things you guys have already heard today, but hopefully I'll share some case studies and bring them to light for you guys. Before we talk about what works in social media, I want to remind you of three of the biggest myths in social media marketing. Myth, no myth number one, social media is not free. So the good news is, Social media is not nearly as expensive as television, radio, outdoor, all of the traditional forms of media and marketing. The bad news is it's not free because if you're going to do social media marketing well, it takes a whole lot of time. Your time, your agency's time, your intern's time, your staff's time, your mother's time, somebody is going to have to work on your behalf in order to make social media work for you. And as we all know, time is money. Speaking of time, social media will not bring you instant results. You know, I love the analogy earlier today of the town square. I use a similar analogy when I think about social media. I think of social media as this big party. So the cool thing about it though is that it's a worldwide party. Um, and so therefore it can be done at scale. But the thing is, if I showed up at a party and I just started handing out $100 bills, you wouldn't necessarily want to do business with me. You might think I'm a little crazy. And in the same way, no matter what you do right away in social media, it's not going to drive instant business results. It's just not going to happen. There's no such thing as an overnight sensation in social media. But over time, because it's a worldwide party, you can have conversations at scale. And therefore, the results over time can be absolutely profound. And finally, social media cannot make up for a bad product or service. In fact, it makes it worse. So when, when clients come to us, and I, I, don't, I don't know uh, what, what you guys heard in the introduction because uh, it's all Greek to me. Um, <laughs> but we work with a lot of the biggest brands in the US, GE, Logitech, uh, 100flowers.com, Verizon, Neutrogena. And uh, when companies, not any of those companies of course, but when companies come to us with a not so likable product or service to promote, we say no. It's not going to work. Social media is going to make it worse because it's going to amplify a negative message. So if 
whether your business is small, medium, or large, if there are issues with your company, with your organization, fix those issues first, and then get into social media. So we're going to talk about the virtues of likable social media, allowing brands to engage in and ignite conversation, creating a meaningful channel to reach audiences, and developing a dedicated and lifelong fan base. This is one of my favorite uh, examples of a brand back home that uses social media very well, Whole Foods. You'll see if you ever check out their Twitter stream, and I know there were some Twitter doubters earlier, and we're going to talk about Twitter in a little bit. Uh, you'll see if you ever ch uh, check out their Twitter stream, they're engaging constantly with their fans and followers. It's a constant conversation. So, my book has 18 strategies. We're going to, for time's sake, cut that into like five or six that we'll talk about today. The first and most important strategy or asset of social media marketing is listening. You know, listening has always been 50% of all communications. As someone that uh, used to do a lot of dating, I can tell you, listening <laughs> is 50% of all communications. And yet, many of us are not very good at the listening part. We're good at the talking part. And marketers, for years and years, haven't had social media to help them. So they've spent probably 90%, 95% of all marketing budgets on the talking part. The TV, the radio, the print, the guerrilla marketing, all that stuff. And maybe only 5, 10% was spent on the listening, focus group testing, survey research. Well now, you have a 24-7 focus group all the time. It's Twitter, it's Facebook, it's Pinterest, it's YouTube. And you have the opportunity to listen to massive, massive, volumes of data. Listen to your customers, listen to your competitors, listen to your prospects, listen to your competitors' customers, and then leverage all that data for your own benefit. So the story I tell at the beginning of my book and the story that I tell to all senior executives is the following story about my, my, uh, my trip to Vegas. Now, I know all of you guys are social media experts, so I won't put any of you on the spot, but how many of you know at least one person one executive that doesn't fully understand the business value of Twitter. How many of you know at least one person that doesn't understand the business value of Twitter? Look around, it's the entire room. Good. So now you guys can tell people this story. About a year and a half ago, I was uh, staying at the Aria Hotel in Vegas. Now I live in New York, so I had just taken a flight about five and a half hours uh, into Vegas. The Aria was the, the, the hippest, trendiest hotel at the time. So I was excited. But when I showed up, I had to wait online. Now it's late at night. I'm exhausted. I just want to check in and go to my room. And I ended up waiting over 45 minutes online at the Aria. Well, of course, I did the natural thing that any social media nerd like me would do. I tweeted. Waiting online over 45 minutes at the Aria, not worth it, pound fail. Which for those of you that don't know social, uh, Twitter, that's social media nerd lingo for you suck. <laughs> well, the Aria wasn't listening, and the Aria didn't respond to my tweet. But the Rio, down the street, was listening. <laughs> and I got a tweet back from the Rio within two minutes of my tweet while I was online at the Aria. Now at this point in the story, almost every time I tell it, senior executives get really excited, their mouths are watering, <laughs> and they say to me something like this, Dave, what did the Rio say? Come on over, we'll take care of you, we've got a room with your name on it. And some of you are thinking that right now. <laughs> well, the Rio didn't tweet that. Had the Rio tweeted something like that, I would have thought two things. First, sort of creepy that they're following me this closely. <laughs> and second, why is it wide open at the Rio when it's all jam-packed and happening and exciting at the Aria? What the Rio tweeted back was the following. Sorry you're having a bad experience, Dave. 
Hope the rest of your time in Vegas goes well. Sorry you're having a bad experience, Dave. Hope the rest of your time in Vegas goes well. Well, guess where I stayed the next time I went to Vegas? So they earned a $600 sale from that one tweet, but the story gets better than that. I like the Rio on Facebook, and several weeks later, I got a Facebook message from a friend that said, hey Dave, I'm having a family reunion out in Vegas for New Year's. I saw you like the Rio. Do you recommend them? And I said, honestly, it's not the newest hotel in Vegas. It's not even the nicest hotel in Vegas. But I'll tell you one thing, they listen to their customers and they have great customer service. And she booked 20 people to stay at the Rio based on that recommendation. So one tweet and one like led to over $10,000 in revenue. And there's not a single person in this room that could argue that that tweet from the Rio was a marketing message. It was not a marketing message. It was listening and demonstrating empathy in 140 characters. That's all they did. I truly believe that responsiveness is no longer a choice. And some of you have small businesses. How many of you have small businesses? Okay, so a whole bunch. You don't even have a small business after your question? <laughs> So, I was waiting for her all day. <laughs> you know, I used, to, I used to say that education is the great equalizer. I really believe today that social media is the great equalizer of our time. We've watched social media topple governments. And for those of you in marketing and business, no matter what the size of your business, you have an opportunity to have an even playing field with some of the largest companies in the world that don't understand social media yet and that aren't listening and aren't responding and aren't engaging. Over 70% of companies don't respond to inquiries and questions and comments on Facebook or Twitter. That's crazy. To me, that's the equivalent of a customer calling you up on the phone and you hanging up the phone on them. Except it's worse because you're hanging up the phone on them in front of millions of people. <laughs> Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Taylor Graziano writes on the Entenmann's page. Entenmann's is a uh, baked goods company in, uh, in the US, right? They have uh, all sorts of uh, cookies and other baked goods products. <coughs> Pancake pockets are the worst things I've ever tried. They made me throw up with their strawberry disgust. <laughs> Entenmann's responds, Hey Taylor, thank you for your feedback. Did you heat them or eat them at room temp? We're really sorry you had a bad experience. It's okay, everything else is great. <laughs> Thanks so much. And here's my personal favorite from a large company. I don't think you guys have Verizon. You guys have Verizon here in Greece? No. Not so much, but you guys, I'm sure, have heard of them. And you have similar telecom companies. And dare I say, there are some industries that aren't naturally the most likable industries in the world. Maybe, just maybe, telecom is one of them. So, this guy, Ray Umstadt Einhoff, writes on the Verizon Facebook page in front of about 75,000 fans at the time. Hey Verizon, why won't you give me my money back? I signed up for your Verizon bundle pack and I'm paying $300 a month and my service is supposed to cost about 120. We call you every month and the problem is never fixed. Funny thing is I know of about 10 other people you're doing this to. Telling them one price and billing them another and not refunding money when you admit you are wrong. You guys suck and a lawsuit may be in your near future. Have a great day you bunch of crooks. <laughs> Now there may have been a couple of senior executives that wanted to delete such a comment. And there may be some senior executives in this room that would want to delete such a comment. What happens if you delete that? This guy goes and tells his friends somewhere else. And he gets louder. 
Is that a risk you really want to take? If you're not sure, I want you to go back and Google United Breaks Guitars. And how many people have seen that video? A bunch. For those of you that haven't seen it, I'll give you the quick story. Uh, this guy was taking a flight with United in the US. They broke his guitar. He complained. They said, sorry, we can't help you. So he made a little YouTube video. And now over 25 million people have watched that YouTube video. <laughs> Instead of ignoring or deleting, you can respond and show the customer that you're the kind of company that cares. Because you know what? We all make mistakes. Everyone knows companies are going to make mistakes. It's when they're transparent and admit it that we're happy. And when they deny it or ignore it that we're angry. And the best practice here is to respond, but to de-escalate the issue, to resolve the issue privately. So we responded. Sorry you're having a problem, Ray. We've sent you a private message to fix the problem. Then, of course, obviously, you have to actually fix the problem. <laughs> but when you do, things like this can happen. Three days later, same person, same Facebook page, 75,000 fans. I want to thank Phantom Files for fixing my billing problem. Devin was awesome and I would like to thank her for her help. Had a regional manager call us today and went over the bill, corrected our bill, thank you. And for the record, I love the file service. The extreme internet package makes me jump up and down every time I download anything or play a game. Thank you, Verizon Files. No more Crookcast for us. <laughs> Crookcast is Comcast, the leading competitor in the United States. Same person. So again, how many of you thought it was marketing that we did with Verizon to fix the problem? That's not marketing, that's customer service. But in front of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people, seems to me that's pretty good marketing. Now, it's important to respond to the complaints, but it's even more important to respond to the positive folks. Because the positive people, the people that really like your brand or your company, these are the people that are your true word of mouth ambassadors. These are the people that are willing to spread the word on your behalf. These people are more valuable than any marketing budget in the world. And these are people you can really have fun with too. You've heard a lot today about the value of uh, uh, being human. But the cool thing is, you can figure out what your brand personality looks like on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Pinterest. And by the way, it can be different depending on the social network and depending on what audience is there. And then you can have really fun, a lot of fun with this. So if you're a bank, you might be super serious. Or if you're a doctor's office, you might be uh, an expert. Or you know, some people are going to be more playful. The next case study is from a... Uh, a brand called the Cumberland Farms Chill Zone. Cumberland Farms is a convenience store in the northeast of the United States, and they make a product called the Chill Zone that is like a, a slushy, a frozen beverage with a lot of different flavors. It's really, really popular with teenagers and really unpopular with pretty much everyone else. <laughs> but teenagers are really, really into it. So, when Ben Silver writes on their Facebook page, sometimes I just lay under the faucet and chug Chill Zone until I pass out. Chill Zone writes back, ha ha ha, what a baller! <laughs> now, that's a company owned by Gulf, a really, really big company. And yet, they're willing to have a lot of fun with their audience, with their fan base, and that really does make a difference. Meaningful engagement cannot be mechanical. You have to be a human. I know you guys have heard this before, but it's worth saying again. You have to mix it up. You have to actually have a kind of, a kind of conversation as a brand that you would have as a friend. Because that's the way people want to relate to you on Facebook and Twitter and all these social networks. Not 10% off, click now. It's not a conversation. Would you, walk, would you walk into a, a, a bar and strike up a conversation by saying, Hi, I'm Dave, and I have 10% off right now. <laughs> no, you talk to people. 
This is uh, Chobani, a uh, yo uh, Greek yogurt, actually, in, uh, in the U.S. I, I, I didn't even plan that. I swear. The four most important words in social media marketing are I'm sorry and thank you. It's so freaking easy. But people keep screwing it up. Because the bigger the company, the more complicated they think it is. And they want to do a marketing campaign. And then lawyers get involved. Any lawyers in the room? Awesome, so I can bash them. <laughs> lawyers, for some reason, are like allergic to the words, I'm sorry. They don't want to ever let you say, I'm sorry. But it's not that hard. And again, once you say, I'm sorry, once people feel heard, they're going to like you. It's not, you know, as soon as, and again, I learned this from dating and relationships. <laughs> once you can say the words, I'm sorry, people forgive you. And if people have something nice to say, if you can just say thank you and again, acknowledge them, people, uh, people forgive you. This is a restaurant in, uh, uh, in uh, Boston, small business. Uh, ooh, bad trick, no pumpkin shakers at the Congress Street location. Hi Donna, we're so sorry. We talked to the local Congress and they're now ready to go with the pumpkin shakes. They just didn't have the correct spices earlier, but now they're ready. If you email us saying where you are, someone from the local Congress will come deliver you a pumpkin shake this afternoon. Wow, great customer service. Delicious, I'll be back for more this week. Not that hard. Just listening, responding, fixing, saying I'm sorry. And this is a bank in the U.S., which, which to me makes it all the more impressive because, again, banks are not necessarily known for being the most likable companies in the world. And they're just, Capital One is thanking folks on Twitter. It's thanking everyone. They're thanking everyone that's recognizing them. Provide value. Give it away. How many professional services companies are here? Professional services? Consultants, all the agencies here are professional services. Come on. Thank you. So we're a social media marketing agency, uh, you know, about five years old. We have, you know, a very, very large community. And we've probably posted on our Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and all of our social networks roughly 15,000 posts in the last five years. Of those 15,000, probably about 15 of them have been self-promotional. That means that the other 14,985 posts are providing value. Their blog articles, their webinars, their free tips. We are helping teach social media marketing and not promoting likable. We, we give away so much value that not one, not two, but now three people, and these are the honest ones, have walked up to me at conferences and said, you know, Dave, I just want to thank you for all the amazing value that you provide, all that free content. I've taken it all, and I've actually started my own social media agency now. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're not only helping competitors, we're inspiring new competitors. <laughs> but for those three people and for others that have copied us and, and not told us, We've gotten dozens and dozens of inbound leads from companies that want to do business with us because we have provided enough value to establish credibility and trust. And they just want to do business with us. We don't have a sales force, and yet we've doubled every year for five years and made the Inc. 500 for two years straight in the U.S., which is like the fastest growing companies in the U.S. Because companies call us because they want to do business with us because we're providing value. I got a call a couple months ago from a company, I can't say their name, unfortunately, but they're a large company, and they said to me, Dave, we have to do an RFP because we're a pretty, do you guys have that term, request for proposal? We have to do an RFP because we're a pretty large company, but we have $250,000 and it's yours. $250,000 gift wrapped because we worked every single day at providing value, but never did a thing for this particular case. In the product space, it's a little different. 10% off is not value. 10% off is marketing. 50% off is value. That's why Groupon and Living Social 
and daily deals companies have done so well using email marketing, which pretty much sucks, and email marketing has like been ruined by so many companies. But they're still doing well with email marketing because they're providing value with 50% off. Even better than 50% off, 100% off. Give stuff away and you'll get loyal customers for life that will talk about you to their friends. Instead of 50% off or 10% off to a lot of people, give 100% off to 50 of the most influential people in your target market. And that will return enormous, enormous results. Here's a, a, a screenshot from Pretzel Crisps that looks on Twitter for people that are saying they're hungry for a snack and then delivers boxes of pretzel crisps to entire offices. You think that ends up being something that's talked about a lot and leads to sales? Absolutely. And you heard a little bit about storytelling earlier. Every brand has a story. In fact, every brand has tons of stories. It's always been great marketing and business to tell your story. But guess what? Before social media, the way to tell a story was a 30 second spot on television. And some of you could afford that, and some of you could not afford that. Although I don't know about her really. <laughs> well now, every single person in the room can afford to tell their story every single day. You can tell a story via a tweet, via a picture, via a Facebook post, via a 45 second video that you shoot with your phone instead of a high production television spot. It's really easy to tell your story. The story of how you were founded, the story of a customer that overcame an obstacle, the story of a staff member, the story of a, a charity involvement that your company is, is, is really interested in. I think in my bio, in my intro, you guys heard a little bit about my story. Here's the rest. My wife and I both had a marketing background. And we're big sports fans. I'm a big baseball fan. So when we decided to get married, we, we didn't want to, uh, we couldn't afford a big wedding. Uh, but I wanted a big wedding. <laughs> so we partnered with a baseball team in New York. And we got married on the field. And we sold sponsorships to the game. So Smirnoff sponsored our alcohol. And David's Bridal sponsored our bridesmaids gowns. And 1-800-Flowers.com sponsored our flowers. And we raised $100,000 for an amazing wedding and $20,000 for charity. And the event was awesome because I married the love of my life. But it turned out to be a pretty awesome marketing promotion as well. And we were on ABC and CBS and CNBC and the New York Times and thousands of blogs. And after the wedding, our vendor said this was totally awesome. What are you guys doing next? And we couldn't get married again, so we started a company. <laughs> But since, since we're recording this, I have to admit it was all my wife's idea. <laughs> but seriously, I told you that story with one picture and a little bit of copy. You guys can tell your story on Facebook and every social network every single day. And the cool thing is, unlike a TV spot that takes months and a lot of money to produce and distribute, if you tell your story one day and no one pays attention, who cares? Do it again the next day. Change it up a little bit. Test it. It doesn't matter. It's a conversation. It's a party. You know how often somebody says something stupid at a party? All the time. <laughs> then you just say something else until you get it right. The only thing better than telling your story is getting your customers to tell their story about you. How can you get your customers talking about you and your brand? I want you to meet one of my favorite people. I actually haven't met her in person before, but I've heard a lot about her. This is the I Love Mary at McDonald's in Chandler, Arizona Facebook page. Now, I think it's really cool that a global multi-billion dollar company that spends a lot, a lot of money on advertising has this Facebook page for Mary, and there are 
1,400 members of the I Love Mary in Chandler, Arizona Facebook group. But even cooler than the fact that there are 1,400 members is some of the, the authentic stories and comments on this Facebook page. I haven't seen Mary lately. Where has she been? Happy People Day, Mary. We love you in the Rocky Mountain region. And my personal favorite, Mary is the best. This is the picture of us at my 40th birthday party on Saturday night. I don't know about you, but this makes me want to go to Chandler, Arizona to meet this Mary. <laughs> this is a company that spends tons and tons of money on advertising, and yet this is organic and much more powerful than any advertising they could ever spend. So the question I have for you guys, two questions actually. One, who's your Mary? And two, even more important, who's your Delin Lucas Bach? Who's your customer that's willing to start talking about you and spreading the word about you? Next up is surprise and delight. Surprise and delight has always been a great tenant of business. It's always great to put that extra smile on your customer's face. But here's the difference. Now, when you surprise and delight in the social media age, the entire world is watching. So instead of just making one customer happy, you can potentially spread the word to many, many people. I told you a little bit ago about the Cumberland Farms Chill Zone page. We started the Facebook page. Teenagers immediately, organically started liking the page. They got the page organically to 30,000 fans. We said to the fans, if you guys can get to 50,000 fans, we're going to give you all a free chill zone. Oh yeah. Now the chill zone is a 79 cent product. It's less than one dollar. So we knew if we could give, give them the free chill zone, they would show up and buy other stuff. Well, they spread the word. First they got to 50,000 fans, then 75,000 fans, then 100,000 fans, then 150,000 fans. And then we gave them a free chill zone day, and a lot of people showed up. Every single store <coughs> looked like that. They saw a 50% sales lift from a promotion that was exclusively done through Facebook. And all we did was incentivize everyone to spread the word to their friends. Well, speaking of surprise and delight, I, I said I had some prizes. Um, I have a, a free book for the person uh, whose uh, birthday is closest. Anyone have a birthday this week? Yeah. Anyone have a birthday today? Yeah. You? What's your name? Basil. Everyone say happy birthday! You're so welcome. So the next strategy is use social ads. In case you guys didn't pick up on this earlier, I will admit I have a little bit of a bias against traditional advertising. Not a huge, huge fan. But I am a huge fan of search advertising and I'm a huge fan of social advertising because there's if you do it right, there's literally no waste. There are two amazing things about social advertising. The first is the built-in word of mouth. And the second is the targeting. Let's look at the word of mouth first. Here's an ad from my, my page recently for New Zealand 100% Pure. Well, I don't care about New Zealand, to be honest. But I care about my friend, Samantha, that likes New Zealand. And as soon as I see that, in my ad, that makes me interested. It's not New Zealand selling me, it's my own friend. What we did for 1-800-Flowers is we sent all the women using Facebook ads to 1-800-Flowers.com for them to like all of their favorite uh, floral bouquets, all of their favorite arrangements. And then when Valentine's Day came around, all we had to do was send men to 1-800-Flowers.com 
and say, just see what they like. So, so when I go to 1-800-Flowers.com and I see my wife likes a flower arrangement, I buy that for her for Valentine's Day. You know, it's not 1-800-Flowers.com selling me flowers. It's not Facebook selling me flowers. It's my wife selling me flowers. It's Samantha selling me on New Zealand. And just to bring this point home about how powerful this is, think about before social media, or, or now, outside of social media. Imagine you're sitting at home one day, and you're watching television, and commercial comes on, and in the upper right-hand corner of the commercial, you see a picture of your friend that says, hey, I like this car. You'd be like, wow. Or you're listening to the radio, at the end of a furniture store commercial, you hear, five of your friends, including Dave, like this furniture store. <laughs> that would be the coolest, most powerful thing ever. And that's what this is already. Awesome stuff. I said there was two great things about social advertising. The second is the targeting. You know, there's a line in The Social Network, how many of you guys have seen the movie The Social Network? Probably a lot of you, pretty much all of you. Wow, okay, cool. There's a line in The Social Network, you know what's cooler than a million dollars? A billion dollars. Well, I have a line that's the opposite of that when I'm thinking about Facebook ads and Facebook targeting. You can target people based on job interest, job title, interest, company where they're working at, every single one of their interests. So to me, you know what's cooler than reaching 900 million people on Facebook? Reaching the right 900 in your target audience, or 9,000, or 90, or nine, depending on scale. I used to call this hyper-targeting. Now we actually use the word, in some cases, nano-targeting. I said you could target people based on job title and company. So if you are an architecture firm, you can target 10 CEOs of 10 real estate development companies in town. I tested this theory out at South by Southwest a couple years ago. I, I went back to my hotel room and I took out an ad targeting 34 year old female, married, employees of likable media. The ad said, I love you, Carrie. I miss you. Be home from Texas soon. Of the 900 million people on Facebook, only one person saw that ad. Now, that's a little silly. Unless, of course, you want to surprise your, 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 your boyfriend or girlfriend for their birthday or Valentine's Day or something. It's sort of fun. But the point of it is, you literally can target anyone that your business wants to reach. And finally, don't sell. Instead, compel customers to buy. Nobody in here likes to be sold to, especially at a party. But everybody likes to buy. So if you can make it easy and compelling to buy, then the cool thing is, it's a longer sales funnel than traditional marketing and media. You have this middle piece of education, engagement, likability, but once you get action, once you get somebody actually buying your product, it's even more powerful because their friends see it in a social context. And you can get loyal, repeat customers and repeat engagement over and over and over again. Here's one of my favorite brands. Actually, they tweeted during this conference. DKNY is a major fashion brand. Um, and yet, they are totally authentic and real with people. They tweet all day long back and forth with folks. Here's a quick look at their Facebook page, their Tumblr. Uh, and their Twitter. I, I definitely recommend you check them all out at DKNY on Twitter. They totally rock. And I told you guys a whole bunch of things, but uh, the most important things for you guys to remember are listen up, be transparent, respond to everyone, 
and just be likable. All right, so I told you guys um, I had a grand prize, and I, I love I love feedback of all kinds. So um, in the next two minutes, I'm going to give away a grand prize to one person that tweets me with the hashtag SMCGR and shares a little piece of feedback over the last 45 minutes. Did you enjoy it? Did you get some value? Am I a total idiot? <laughs> if you want to say something really nasty, just say it in Greek. <laughs> and everyone will qualify to win, and I will pick somebody randomly that will win, not just the book, but a giant orange thumb. <laughs> oh yeah! This total prize pack is valued at over $20 US. And it could be yours, and I'm going to take, let's see. Oh, um, as I said earlier also, if you have any questions, comments, follow up, uh, at Dave Kirpin or our Facebook page, fb.com slash likablemedia, or our Twitter account, at likablemedia. And if you really want to go totally old school, you can even email me. Okay, so I'm going to choose the second person from the top of my Twitter stream. Ta-da! Now the internet fails. Congratulations to uh, at Elena K2. At Elena K2, are you here? Give it up for Elena! Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you, Dave.